Welcome to the eLearnTronics soldering tutorial for the electronics learning board for the multiplexing board. You should have your kit in hand. It may not look exactly like this, but whatever package it's in, go ahead and pull out the board. This is the multiplexing board. And then just go ahead and dump out all of the other components. You won't need the bag anymore, so feel free to set it aside. Let's dig in here and see what we have. We've got a 9 volt to barrel jet connector. We won't need that until later, so we'll set it over here. Here's the board connector for the barrel jet connector. We have several resistors all strung together. These are all 470 ohm resistors, and they'll all be bound together like this. Next, what do we have here? Let's start pulling out LEDs. Go ahead and separate by color your four different groupings of LEDs. You should have red, blue, green, and yellow. We'll pull out the blues here. And we're just going to sort these to make it a little bit easier to work through our pile later. If you don't care about that, then you can just go willy-nilly. But I am a big fan of organizing before I start taking very hot metal and melting it onto an electronics board. All right. Next, we're going to have eight different tact switches, or they're more commonly known as push buttons. Gather those up. You'll have two four by one sets of headers. Got four that way and one that way. And then, four different hex screws and hex standoffs. We're not going to need these until the very end, so we'll set those aside. All right, got a clear work surface, got some solder, got a soldering iron. Let's take a look at our board. We've got a spot for our barrel jet connector, our four by one headers, all of our LEDs. These are grouped by color. So blue at the top, then red, then green, then yellow. We've got spots for all eight tack switches around the edge and all 16 of our resistors. So we're going to start with the resistors. We always want to start with the component that is the most flush with the board. And in almost every case, that is going to be resistors. To get these out of there, just grip the paper and the resistor and pull away at the paper. It's okay if they get bent, because we're going to be bending them ourselves anyway. All right, you can recycle that paper, probably. All right, so each resistor we're going to place. Uh, I'm going to come in and bend some of these first, instead of going one by one. You're just going to bend them right at the resistor. Uh, when you're doing this many, it can be helpful to have a tool. So, you know, I've got this little pick thing that, you know, if your fingers get sore, you can use it. I, I have used this when I've had to do like 50 different resistors all at once. But you can see it's a little bit slower. But it does get you a nice clean fold. There's also resistor bending tools that you can buy that. I guess if you're going to do like thousands of resistors, it makes sense. I think you can buy them pre-bent as well. But uh, I'm going to be honest, I'm, I just use my fingers for the most part. It's not a tremendous hardship, especially with only 16 resistors to deal with. Almost there. All right, and if at any point in this video uh, you fall behind or I get ahead of you, feel free to just pause it and catch up. So now I'm going to start placing the resistors in the board. And this is what's known as stuffing a PCB, a printed circuit board. And quite honestly, I, I find it to be pretty dang satisfying. So we're just gonna push in these resistors. If you're OCD, you can make sure that all of the bands face the same direction. I know some people really care about that, 
Um, I'll do it just so that it's prettier, so that if I have a friend look at this who's OCD, it won't bother them quite as much, but it does not matter. The resistors can go in either direction. Uh, They're non-polar components, unlike the LEDs, which we'll get to later. All right, I'm gonna actually tack down some of these. So I'm only going to hit one solder joint per resistor. And that's just to keep them nice and clean. All right, uh, they all look flush. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to tack down the second solder point for each resistor and lock them in place. If you don't know why we do that, we tack down one point first just to make sure that they are nice and flush with the board and we're happy with that. Uh, and then we go in and if they're not, then we only have to melt one solder point uh, and correct the issue versus if we have uh, soldered down both points, it becomes much more difficult to level out a resistor. If you don't care about how it looks, then you don't even have to do that. But for me, it just looks prettier. Uh, you reduce the risk of a short. It's just a good practice to get into. So go ahead and continue placing your resistors. This can be a little tedious, but personally, I, I kind of enjoy this. It's nice. You can throw on some music. So I'm going to go one row at a time just to make it easier to access uh, the various soldering points. You, you can place all of them if you want. It's totally up to you. This is your journey. Uh, I just think that this makes it a bit easier. Uh, yeah, this one is not quite level, so I'm going to just touch the soldering iron to that solder joint to reflow it, and then I can push back against it with my finger to get it completely flush. So I'm happy with that. And so I'm going to come in and attack down the other solder points. There we go. Row number two is complete. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna speed up the video. Feel free to pause it uh, if I get ahead of you. But you're just going to be going through, soldering all of the resistors, and I will see you when you've done that. Okay, and just clipping the last leads. Clean up the board and there we go. Beautiful resistors, nice and flush and clean with the board. Now if you're not ready, uh, go ahead and pause the video. For our next component, it looks like our tack switches are going to be the, uh, the most flush with the board. So we're just going to stick these in, in each hole. These can be a bit of a pain sometimes. Their leads bend kind of weird. Uh, but the nice thing is once you get them in there, they are in there. They kind of hook around the, uh, the through holes so that you can shake this thing and they're not really going to come out. We're still going to solder them because they, you can pull them out pretty easily. So you might have to bend the leads a little bit. Sometimes uh, a pair of tweezers can be very helpful in doing this. Some will be easier than others. Sometimes it's... Uh, it can be easier to just slide in one side, so two of the pins, and then kind of bring it down on the other side and uh, use your tweezers to kind of guide them into the hole. So you don't have to go too quickly, but uh, just take your time. You don't want to break one of these leads. Now the way these are designed, if you break one lead, uh, it actually won't break the entire circuit but you still want to just be careful. Take your time. There's no rush. Uh, the nice thing is since these hook in and hold their place, uh, you can kind of check to see that they're flush before you solder a single point. 
clean off my iron, retin the tip. I'm using a fume extractor, just a good reminder. Uh, you should use a fume extractor. If you don't have one, work in a very well ventilated area. You do not want to be breathing in these fumes. So I'm just tacking down one point for each switch or each button. Technically it's a switch, but we all know it's a, it's a push button. And I'll just double check these, make sure nothing kind of got out of alignment. And this one really comes down to how OCD you are. If you really want to make sure that they are perfectly lined up and use a straight edge and go through all of that, more power to you. That is not me. So I'm just going to come through and hit the other, uh, what would this be, 24 soldering points. And just get all of these things locked down. These tack switches can be a little weird to solder, but uh, you know they have that natural kind of angle in them. And I find that you can uh, sort of tuck your soldering iron up under there and get like three points of contact. So you really get a nice, uh, nice solid touch point so that you can really heat up the solder joint pretty effectively. Because remember, we don't want to touch the soldering iron with our solder. We're using the iron to heat up the through hole and the component lead uh, and then uh, we're touching the solder to that component lead or through hole and the heat from those uh, two points is what's actually melting the solder. All right, go ahead and check your joints. Make sure that they're all good. Make sure everything's flush. And all right, clickety-clack. We get to play with this. I love that click. It's just so satisfying. Checking my solder joints. Gonna go through them one by one just to make sure they all look okay. Make sure you don't have any uh, any cold solder joints or any other issues. I've got a couple here that I'm just gonna touch up. Make sure that you can see my scalp while I'm doing it. And there we go. That's looking good. Now you'll notice some of these brown points. Uh, that is the rosin core from the solder. It doesn't really bother me, but if it does bother you, I believe you can use a Q-tip and some alcohol, rubbing alcohol, uh, and clean that up. Okay, next is our LEDs. Now the LEDs are a polar component, which means that it matters which direction we put it into the board. Now if we look at the leads, the short side is going to correspond to the cathode uh, which on the circuit board is going to be the side with the flat surface. Now the LED bulb also will correspond to, uh, to that flat surface. You'll notice that one side is rounded, the other side is flat. So we just want to make sure that they line up correctly. So I'm going to go color by color and we're going to have the short lead facing to the left. And I'm, again, I'm just going to tack down one point. I'm doing one row at a time because trying to do all 16 at once, it with all of those leads sticking up, it gets pretty unruly pretty quickly trying to get your soldering iron through all of those leads. Now that I've got the one point tacked down, I'm going to use my maneuver to reflow the solder and then push the LED through. This has a potential to be dangerous. You're dealing with a very, very hot piece of metal so if you're uncertain about this, you can also just place the board flat on the surface, uh, reflow the solder, and then just use the pressure of your board to get it to uh, lie flush with your circuit board. Uh, so just push it down against the table. I'm comfortable doing this, uh, but kids, listen to your parents. Uh, make sure that, that they know what you're doing and that they're okay with it. And just be careful. Whenever you're handling that soldering iron, be careful. This thing can, it can burn your skin. And that is not a pleasant experience. And from what I've found, it's an experience you only make once. 
See, so this one, it's a little tricky, so I'm going to use my board technique. And there we go. So I'm going to solder all of the uh, secondary joints to lock in all of the blue LEDs. Let it cool off for a second. And then I'm going to uh, use my flush cutters to trim all of these leads. Now I save my, my leads because they're very helpful uh, when you're working with protoboard to make little prototype circuit boards. If that's not something you're gonna do, then you can just throw them right in the recycling. But I'm a fan of holding on to them. All right, so we've got our blues. Next, I'm going, I'm gonna go outside in and that's because this will keep the board from rocking. If I were to put in the red LEDs now, then they would it would be very uh, one-sided and the board wouldn't sit flush. But you'll see here when I flip over the board, just double check that they're all in, the, in there in the same direction. And now the board sits flat against the surface. So it's a little bit easier to work with. It's a little bit easier to get it flush. So if I had the red LEDs, it would just be sitting in there at an angle. Not something you have to do. You can go through and do this however you like, but just a little trick to make your life a little bit easier. Tack down our points. Uh, you wanna let it cool for just a second. I have picked up the board before and had LEDs fall right out. And then you end up with a through hole that is full of metal and it really just makes your life very difficult trying to fit an LED into a through hole that is already filled with solder. It's not impossible, but it's also not fun. We'll flush up all of our yellow LEDs and now hit our secondary joints. Three and four. Very good. Check my solder joints, make sure I'm happy with them. I am, so I'm going to go ahead and trim up these leads. We're doing pretty good, guys. We're like more than halfway there. So this is a great board. It's a lot of fun to play with. I definitely recommend watching the explainer video. You can kind of go through uh, some of what's possible if you combine this with an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. Uh, but it's just a fun board and you get tons and tons of solder points. So you get a, this is really good for actually practicing your soldering as well. There's what, 50 or 60 different individual solder points. All right, so now we're doing our reds. You could do red or green at this point. And you know the drill, tack down one point. Let it cool for just a second. Flush it all up. Now, realistically, I could have done both the red and green here. I suppose I also could have done the blue and yellow at the same time. But there's nothing wrong with working methodically. When you work methodically, you make sure that you don't make mistakes. It's when you work quickly that you can end up making a mistake. If it's just an LED that doesn't work, that's not a huge mistake. But if you start working with more uh, expensive components, then those mistakes start to get, well, you know, more expensive. Clean up that solder joint. Looking good. I always like to double check that everything's flush because sometimes it is possible uh, to have a joint kind of come out of flush when you're soldering up that second joint. It's not common because it really requires your soldering iron to slip, but it's, uh, it's easier to correct while you still have the long lead on there. All right, we're almost done with the LEDs. Just gotta do our greens. The greens, by the way, are definitely the brightest and most difficult to look at of these LEDs. I do not recommend staring directly at them. We're almost there. You know the drill by now, right? 
one point, one point, one point, one point. Let it cool. See, you're going to be a pro by the end of this board. Flush everything up. You'll, you'll definitely find that over time this becomes, uh, you get some muscle memory for this technique. Now you do have to be careful when you're flushing up resistors uh, because it is very easy to accidentally hit the metal of the resistor with your finger and then get a really nasty little burn. And that is not a fun one. I know I've said at least four times this video, but the soldering iron is very hot. And the solder is, it's literally liquid metal. I mean, it's molten metal. That's how hot it is. All right. Got our tack switches. Got our LEDs. Now what's next? We can do either our headers or our barrel jack connectors. So we want to see which one is taller. And we're going to do the shorter of the two. Oh boy, that is really close. I think I'm going to go with the, the headers. So these are pretty straightforward. They just fit right into the board. All right. Now it's, it's going to be... Uh, it might rock a little bit, um, but these headers should be pretty easy to solder on. All right. And these, these headers are, if you're not going to be using an Arduino or, all oh, right, and they just fell out. If you're not gonna be using an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi to drive the multiplexer board, then, uh, man, this is, not wanting to stay in. So I think I'm just gonna do one at a time. Uh, if you're not gonna use a microcontroller like the Arduino or Raspberry Pi to control the multiplexer board, then you technically don't even need these headers. Uh, feel free to leave them off if you're not going to use them and use them for a separate project. Uh, if you were to go buy these things by themselves, they are not cheap. Uh, you'd think they would be, but they're really not. So uh, it could be pretty handy to have around, but if you want to drive this with a microcontroller, you can do some pretty cool stuff with it. So I highly recommend checking that out. There will be a code release at some point, uh, at the very least with an Arduino. Uh, all right, so these aren't quite flush, but they're pretty close. You really just have to worry about the, uh, the one axis of rotation here. Double check it, make sure we're happy with it. This one you really have to do more on site because there's not necessarily a super large surface uh, that you can make sure is flush against the circuit board. So you're really gonna use a lot of your, of your site on this one. And like all things with, uh, with flushing up your board, it's just, it's really how OCD you want to be. If it's a little off, it's still gonna work. As long as the solder is still connecting uh, the component to the board, you're gonna be okay. Once we get, the, get them straight, it's a very quick process. Again, let it cool off. And these things, you don't even have to trim them. Uh, you should check your solder joints. <laughs> If you're like me, you're bound to make uh, at least a couple of uh, poor solder joints. Clean all of these up. I think that looks okay now. So we're down to our last component, or at least our last soldering component. It's our barrel jack connector. Now these are a little bit tricky because the holes on the circuit board are round. However, these slots on the barrel jack connector are, uh, well, they're slots, they're, they're long and narrow. So uh, it's going to take a lot of solder to fill in this joint. Uh, it can take some time, but be careful. With so much solder in there, it holds on to heat. It will stay hot for a surprisingly long time and it's very easy to burn yourself. So you wanna give it a good amount of time to cool off, right? I'm talking 
10 to 20 seconds. Like it'll stay hot for a while. And that center peg in the barrel jack connector also gets hot because it's connected. So you want to be careful. This is probably the component on which I've burned myself the most number of times. Okay, so we're just going to feed in solder until the solder joint is full. Clean off our soldering iron because we are done. Double check to see if I need to do any cleanup, but I'm just going to tin my tip. All right, so I'm going to turn off the soldering iron, get the solder out of there. Wash your hands before you do anything like go eat or, or anything like that, but here we go. I'm going to add the, uh, the standoffs. So we're going to put the screw through on one side and then just take the standoff and screw it in. You don't need a hex wrench or anything like that, or a hex screwdriver. Uh, just the friction from holding the screw with your fingers will be enough. These don't have to be super tight. And technically you don't actually need these standoffs. I think it makes the board look nicer and more importantly, uh, all of those solder joints on the bottom can scratch up table surfaces. So this will keep uh, your mom, roommates, loved ones, whomever you live with, it'll keep them happy because you won't scratch up all of your table surfaces. And there we go. All it's waiting for now is a nine volt battery. And you are good to go. So go ahead and watch the explainer video, see how this works, see how you can control this thing with an Arduino. And this has been a fun one, guys. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.